being part of the Korean team and going through like, the process of training and then coming over to compete in the U.S. and I really got a feeling of what that would be like and the uh, the hard work, perseverance, and and the huge amount of pride that uh, being a Taekwondo uh, member of a team and competing, representing your entire country, that, that means so much. I remember walking into the big scene when the, uh, at the auditorium and the drums are beating, and it just gave me a chill, you know, even though you're walking as an actor, but I just, just felt like, wow, this would be amazing to have that feeling come in there. Um, any questions? <laughs> yes. For the kicks, how did did you did you guys really actually hit them or did it actually look like you did? Sometimes what we call it's kinda of like kiss contact. Uh, especially on the body. The body can kind of tap and you know make a little contact. Usually on any kind of a face hit, we try to not because uh, first, uh, the other guy's not gonna really like it. And then we have to probably do like 10, 12 takes of the same thing. So uh, if you hit somebody, and even if they got a little black and blue, then it won't match for later on if we shoot something uh, in another scene. But primarily we don't want to hurt each other because uh, we're all friends. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's there's special makeup blood. It's, oh no! Are you saying there's no real blood? <laughs> uh, yeah, and Santa Claus. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's it's made out of this red coloring, and it's actually kind of sugar base to it, so it. Uh, it Kind of tastes good, but not really. <laughs> Sometimes they have you put it in your mouth, and then before the take, when you get hit, you go, Bleh! and you see all this coming out. So it's it's one of those <laughs> nasty stuff. And also, it's after doing that for several times, it's like, okay, I had enough. And then bruise marks, uh, they would do everything from coloring your face. Sometimes they put what is called a prosthetic, so it's like this little latex piece of. So you can put a big lump, so you can have a, like a big, like black eye that covers your eye, your eyelid can't even open. So it looks pretty scary sometimes. Even worse is when you do a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> then you have a knife sticking out, of you, and you know, you have to walk around with this knife, have lunch with it. <laughs> but usually, it's they put like half a knife in there. So it looks like the other half's inside you, and then they put it like this little plate, and they glue it onto your body. It's always fun to go home after work. <laughs> did, you, did you have something? Um, no. Okay. The actors who were not martial artists, uh, were they using stunt doubles, or was there someone there to train them? To do because I, as a parent, I don't know what the kids and the teachers here know. So I wasn't able to tell much of the difference, as I'm sure that was right. part of the goal of the movie. But how much training did those people actually have? Uh, I was I was fortunate enough to fight Eric Roberts. <laughs> so he had, I, th I think, a few months prior to shooting uh, some intensive training. Uh, he did not have a stunt double. I had, it was just me and him. Uh, I got smacked a couple of times during rehearsals and training. I, so, but things happen. As long as it's not intentional, uh, it's okay. Uh, when you say you got smacked, is that because he 
didn't have the training to be able to stop this close to your face? Yeah, right. It's, you know, it, I always tell people how the difference between there's the real martial arts and then there's movie martial arts. And, uh, you know, we're, we're taught to kick and punch, like, past the target instead of just right in front. Uh, so you almost have to unlearn everything you do for movies because you want to stay at least six inches in front of someone's face if you throw a punch, if you pull back, or you throw a kick. Uh, so really, what's important to have the foundation of real martial arts, then you have the right balance, the right distance, and timing. So uh, that part is still the same. It's just distancing and the opposite of telegraphing. You have to telegraph on a movie you want, here comes the punch. But in a real fight, you just want to just poof, pop one in. So it's, that part is the opposite. Did you ever find yourself, where you're supposed to take a hit in, as far as the movie goes, and then you, you have a reaction to just get out of the way or block it or something like that? <laughs> uh, sometimes I've worked with actors that, uh, in the middle of this rehearsed choreography, suddenly I'm looking at their face and you know they just forgot everything. They're looking <laughs> blank at you and I said, then you have to say, okay, what is he gonna throw? And the director has not yell cut, so he said, all right, I'm on my own. Uh, it gets scary sometimes. And you're not supposed to hit the actor, so that's rule number one. Were any of the fights like the result, like were any of the choreographed, like just the, were any of the ones in there just a result of someone going completely off what was planned? Uh, no, we we pretty much want what. Think of it as like dancing. If you do a nice choreographed dance, so if your dance partner suddenly is going that way and you're supposed to go that way, then. Nothing works. Then, then that's yeah. You imagine that on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> so as he throws her in there and she doesn't, you know, and he moves away. <laughs> so a lot of times it's about safety. Also, it's uh, very important about performance and just how it ends up looking on on film.